What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the show, the podcast. Another week of the show and this podcast, uh, which is also a show that is a podcast. You see, that's uh, people ask me, how'd you come up with the title? Well, the game's called MLB The Show. This is a podcast. It's the show, the podcast, which is also a show that's a podcast. There you go. Now you understand. Uh, today, we're going to talk about kind of some content. We had a huge content uh, uh, drop on Friday, excuse me. If you are on YouTube and you subscribe to my YouTube, you've already seen I did a little recap of the content. I'm going to do that again a little bit here for the podcast crowd. Uh, we're also going to go over my my big gripe with this game right now. We've talked about the state of pitching before. So it might sound a little repetitive. And the intention is for it not to be. But it's still a problem. And they said they addressed it. And now it's worse than ever before. So we're going to talk about pitching just a little bit. Uh, otherwise, though, if you guys are new listeners of the podcast, thank you guys for being here in whichever way in which you're watching slash listening. If you're on Spotify and Apple, thank you. If you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe before you go. We are on the path to partnership. We just passed 700 subscribers. Can we talk about this? A month ago, we just passed 500. We've gotten 200 subscribers in the past month. Let's get that number to 1,000, let's become a YouTube partner, and let's just keep killing the content game. I'm having a ton of fun with MLB The Show 23 and sharing all my opinions with you all. You guys have been great along this ride. Twitch streams have been going crazy, popping off. Twitch.tv slash KDJTV. Uh, but that's that. Let's, let's talk content now. I'm going to give you guys a team update first. Because that will help talk about the content. Uh, Fernando Tatis Jr. is my new left fielder. This card was the new Chase 2 pack. Um, and my silly goodness God. I mean, this card is just stupid. Um, I did not pull him, for those who are curious. I don't have any pack luck this year. I don't know if you do. If you do have pack luck, let, let me know, because I'd like to share in some of it. Um, I purchased him for about 300,000 stubs yesterday, a.k.a. Sunday. Now, today, on Monday, he's 273,000 stubs. So that makes me feel terrible because I would have liked to save those stubs because now I'm poor. Um, but, I mean, you look at this card. And the only thing to complain about is his vision because his PCI is definitely teeny tiny. On Hall of Fame, I was like, where the... F like, I was squinting trying to find it after I swung. But his contacts will play. His powers max. 86 in the field is the most generous thing SDS has ever done to anybody, probably right next to Derek Jeter's fielding. 99 arm is fine. That makes perfect sense. 94 speed, 95 stealing, 93 base running aggressiveness. Uh, his swing definitely takes some time to get used to. So I'm not looking to hit the cover off the ball from the jump. I am one for eight so far, but both of those games were Hall of Fame ranked games. I am going to get that average up a little bit in the moonshot event. Now we have Ken Griffey in center field. I'm up to three flawless runs this year, guys. Three flawless and a 12-1 and one, and sadly an 11-2. and two. That one made me really upset. But we're suddenly a BR demon. So we have Ken Griffey Jr. in center field. This card's incredible. Sammy Sosa in right. Chipper, oh, Chipper Jones is over at third. Jeter's at short. Trey Turner at second. We're still rocking with Murakami at first. Giancarlo Stanton is my P5 Adonis of a DH. And Jorge Posada, because I went flawless twice, is my catcher. I've been starting to see one team build become something of meta. And that's fine. Metas are going to establish themselves, especially with the way captains work now. The uh, Speaking of captain, the cover star captain is becoming a team build that is juiced. Because you don't just have to be a captain card. I mean, you don't have to be like a cover art card to get it. Like, Fernando Tatis Jr. was on a cover. He counts. Same thing for Griffey. Same thing for Jeets, same thing for Chipper, same thing for, like, Vladimir Guerrero. David Wright is the captain that you would put at third base. So, that is a way, going back to Tatis, you can get his contacts up quite a bit. I like where my God Squad's at. The only foreseeable changes I can foresee, I should, have said, should not have said foresee so early in that sentence. Uh, adding Pedro to the rotation, we're going to look at the rotation in a second. And adding Babe Ruth, I think, to first base. I actually think my priority is going to get Pedro first. I haven't seen Pedro a lot because he's clearly the worst of the three bosses. But I kind of want to use him for a how-to pitch with video next week. Not this week, because this week we've already recorded it, and we will talk about that later. Because that's the that's the uh, 
impetus for my pitching critiques. Um, On to the bench now. Soto, Peterson, uh, Salvador Perez, and Alex Bregman. That really hasn't changed a lot. The rotation, I don't think that's really changed either. Uh, The bullpen, we've added some guys. We've added Gagne. We've added Devin Williams. We've added Andrew Chafin. Uh, He's from the new Charisma program that came out. I think this card is pretty nice, especially when there are zero lefty relievers in this game. Um, And I don't know if Trevor Hoffman... I think Trevor Hoffman was on the team last podcast, but if not, Trevor Hoffman's here to boost my non-closing relief pitchers, which is one, two, three, four of them, I believe, if I counted correctly. Let's see what the captain boost is telling me. Um, Oh, I have five of them. So there you go. Plus 10 hits per nine, plus 10 Ks per nine. Content-wise, I mean, they had just a banger of a drop. And one person in the YouTube comments was like, oh, you completely ignored the Diamond Duos pack. You're right, I did. And I didn't do it on purpose. But are we really enthused by Tory Hunter, who's like a bench bat at best, and Brian Wilson, who historically sucks online? I don't know. They exist, though. New Charisma cards. I love the Charisma card art. Brian Wilson and Tory Hunter are certainly both charismatic folks. So I like it. Uh, but the big content, guys, came in the Fernando Tatis, the addition to Tops Now, which I think is right here. Yep. Not a lot to add. All of these cards kind of suck caca. Franchi Cordero is a lot of fun in BR, for whatever it's worth. His swing is electric. Uh, but this program right here, the Charisma program, this was fun. This was fun. We got some decent cards. I, I'm not going to go over every single one because some of them do suck. But Joe Kelly is a usable reliever. Andrew Chafin, as I said, is a usable reliever. Um, Daniel Vogelbach is not... Re- he's kind of a bench bat. Not a great one. O'Neill Cruz. I was very disappointed with this card. Ozzy Albies is a starting caliber second baseman, as is Marcus Semien. And Luis Castillo is okay. This is a cool program. We got like almost 20 free cards last week to add to your set one collection to get you closer to either Chipper, Babe, or Pedro. They're not making it hard to get these these juiced cards. They're making it very attainable, and I appreciate that. As I yawn, God, it's been a while, guys. Be proud of me. When's the last time I yawned on podcast? First person to comment correctly gets a virtual hug from me. It's been a while. Sorry, Mondays are really rough for me. I meant to record this yesterday, and I did not, because I am a trash can. Uh, but now I want to talk about pitching, guys. I want to talk about pitching. So, yesterday, Sunday, so for you guys now, for future you, two days ago, I recorded, this is a spoiler alert, I recorded a How to Pitch with Paul Blackburn video. I lost the game 9-8 to eight or 8-7, to seven, whatever it was. I think it was 9-8. to eight. I'm posting the video anyway because I don't, you know, I don't just post wins. I post losses too because that's... It'd, it'd be fake if I only posted wins. Um, and Blackburn, in my opinion, is a very good pitcher this year. His control plays better than that 85. His, his par regions are nice. He has good movement on his pitches. He dots. He's effective. I don't know what you want me to say. Tunnels well. My opponent scored six runs in five innings off of Paul Blackburn on Hall of Fame. My opponent was a good player, a certainly above average one. I don't think my opponent was a rock star. His record, I actually checked after the game, was 79 and 60 in ranked seasons. First of all, it's a lot of ranked seasons. Second of all, that tells me he's not the best player in the world. You're above 500. That's a good record. For those of you who have that type of record, it is good. But what I'm getting at here is the, 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 the type of results he was getting didn't make sense. And why is that? Because every fourth pitch Paul Blackburn threw warped to a different part of the plate. I'm not blaming my opponent for cheating, if people are jumping the gun here. There is no assumption of that. There's no blame of that. I don't think he was cheating. I, I don't think he was. There's no cheating. But what I am getting at here is, for some reason, there are still significant pitch warping issues and they seriously affected that game because multiple pitches that warped were then hit for doubles or home runs. They were not remotely close to the spot in which I threw them. And the proof of this will be on Thursday when you guys watch this video. 
because it features every single pitch I threw in that game. If you guys don't know how my, my uh, how to pitch with videos work, I will give you a brief explainer. Please make sure you subscribe on YouTube and go watch them. I think they're valuable. Of course, I create the content. But the point of how to pitch with dot, 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 every week on Thursday, I have a video that comes out that does not include hitting gameplay at all. This is not a look how crazy this game was video. This is me showing you step by step, every at bat, every single pitch I throw, how I attack hitters, how I attack certain hitters, how I attack certain tendencies, how I get ground balls, how I pitch effectively to win games. That's all it is. You see every pitch I throw, you don't see a single at bat. So because this was a nine inning ranked game, I didn't actually add up how many pitches that were thrown. You're probably seeing about a hundred pitches thrown in this game. Ballpark, something like that. 15 to 20 of them were warped. And a lot of them were hit hard when they warped. And again, I am not blaming my opponent. I don't even know if my opponent saw warping pitches. But therein lies a problem there because we don't know where the communication issue is. This game cycle started out with pitches warping and pinpoint not working. So the first thing they did was fix the warped pitches. And it fixed. It, it did. And then, about a week later, they went after the pinpoint problems. Those fixed. But then the warps came back. Ever so often. Not every pitch. Not even every game. Sometimes if you played for like three hours, you'd get three warp pitches. That's it. It's not great. You shouldn't have any. But you can live with it. But now here we are, recording on April 24th. And ranked seasons is a hellhole because it happens there so much. Doesn't happen a ton in BR, sometimes. Doesn't happen in events, only sometimes. In ranked seasons, it is constant. I will not play ranked seasons again until it's fixed. If I have to record a video, that's different. I will continue to do so. But for enjo enjoyment, and ranked is a funny pairing of words, but like for grinding purposes, until warping pitches is fixed, I'm not playing ranked. It's not worth it. I played two games on Sunday, lost both on warped pitches. I'm 21 and 8 now. I've actually only lost one game that didn't have any weird shit happen. I had three disconnect losses. My math didn't add up there. Three disconnect losses, two warp pitch... All right, so I have three normal losses. Sorry, math is hard. What I'm getting at here, 21 and 8, whatever. Records don't matter. I'm not one to make excuses, but clearly there are significant pitching issues right now. And I don't know why it's happening. I am friends with a couple top players in this community. One of them who I respect a bunch. Uh, shout out to Dirty Dan, the homie. He hangs out in the Twitch chat all the time. And he, who is a top 50 grinder, who plays hundreds upon hundreds of ranked seasons games a year, isn't even like, he doesn't want to touch ranked seasons right now. Because it's that bad. Now, granted, that's just two persons' opinions on ranked seasons. Some of you might not even realize pitches are warping, and that's fine. But it is abundantly clear to me that it's, it's an issue. And this game is so close to being like an 8 out of 10. Hitting's in a good spot. The pinpoint tune certainly helped balance it out, and when it's not warping... There's a very good balance, and the game is running well. But the warping brings this game score down. I'm not scoring a game right now after a month when we know that more patches are coming. But what could be an 8 out of 10-ish is being held down significantly by pitch problems that are not my fault. Pitching, out of all things, should be the most input-based and input-driven. And for some strange reason, we're having these massive problems. I don't know what the solution is, because if you fix warping, does it break pinpoint again? There's clearly some sort of miscommunication in the coding, and I don't know what it is. Last year, pinpoint and pitching was so overpowered that they clearly tried to take some of that away. And I think we learned that from the, the patch notes, the developer notes, when they made the most recent update. But I don't know how it got this bad. I think, you know, obviously everybody wants to play this game or play a baseball game, period, to hit and hit home runs. But there's nothing more frustrating than scoring three runs and then letting up three or four or five on some shit that you did not 
deserve to be punished for. Um, so there's a big problem here. There's a big, big problem here. I don't know how to fix it. I'd rather live with pinpoint that kind of sucks sometimes than warping pitches. Because at least with pinpoint that kind of sucks sometimes, there is a circle, an area of, of, of possibilities in which it will lie. The warping is going completely out of any circle that would exist. It's, it's going to the opposite corner of the plate. And it's unacceptable. It's really not okay. Um, like I said, I don't know why it happens more in ranked seasons. Maybe I just notice it more because it's a nine-inning game versus a three-inning game in BR and events. I don't know. Maybe you guys have different stories that you think it is worse in BR. Maybe that's your experience, and that's fine, too. The more opinions we can have on this, the better. Because the more opinions we have, the more SDS can learn, and the more info they have to fix things. So, if you guys are on YouTube, let me know what you think of warp pitches. Where you're seeing them, how you're seeing them. If you're noticing any trends, are certain pitches warping more than others? I have found that sliders are warping a lot and change-ups are warping a lot. Um, I saw an exchange on Twitter, going back to the homie Dirty Dan, between uh, Dan and Digital Champion DC is a legend. And DC has a theory that yellow downstrokes on Pinpoint are having some sort of desync issue. That might be true. But I've also experienced warp pitches on perfect or damn near perfect pinpoint input. Um, so I don't know if that's the entire solution or um, explanation, not solution. I, I really hope that we get some clarity on why the issue is occurring. I really hope that we get another patch soon because as I said, there's, you know, there's no reason to play ranked right now if what you're doing doesn't help you win. And the ranked season... The season of ranked ends. Ends. So many menus you gotta hit now. May 12th. So that's two and a half weeks, three weeks. It might be three weeks. Um, we're running out of time. I'm at 705. I started yesterday at 769 because I lost twice. I still gotta play a handful of games to make World Series. Now, I already got the pack. Because it's easy to get the pack. I almost never make World Series during the first season because it takes too many games. But they extended the length of seasons now, so I feel as if I should make a run. There's just no reason to do so when it sucks this bad. I am very curious to hear your guys' opinions on the issue. Because it, it, and it, it, it doesn't discriminate. It doesn't matter what pitcher you use. If you use Paul Blackburn, who's got... Mid control to good control, it happens. If you use Bob Gibson, who's got 93 control, it happens. You use Roki Sasaki with 88, it happens. You use people who dot like Trevor Hoffman, maybe not Trevor Hoffman, I thought he had better control. Anybody of these guys have good control? There you go, 89 Eric Gagne, it happens. Chafin, 90 control, it happens. It happens to everybody. Common, all the way to Diamond, I don't get it. I already played this game for several weeks on Analog. And I really hated it. I really don't want to do it again. Um, but I don't think pitches are really warping on analog. And they seem to be going roughly where they're supposed to. I just really don't want to do it. I really don't like analog. And I'm not going back to meter. Meter kind of sucks too. Uh, at least for me. You might be great at meter. And I don't pass... You can use whatever pitching method you want. I don't pass any judgment. But for me, I hate it. Um... It doesn't make you any more or less competitive depending on which one you use. It's just personal preference. Just for me, I don't care for it. Um, you know, it seems silly if pinpoint is the issue to continue using pinpoint. You know, that's like call me crazy, fool me once, fool me twice, fool me through, whatever the hell the saying is. Um, but I just enjoy pinpoint. I feel like I'm actually participating in the pitching. So I need it to be fixed. I really do, because it is it's painful right now to pitch, and it shouldn't be. Maybe it's also like an overcorrection. We're so used to how pitching last year, you could just perfect game every other game. Um, now you can't. Now it's it's a bloodbath, and it's an absolute slugfest every single time you queue into a game. You might as well just close your eyes and throw the ball, because you have better success doing that, most likely, than actually spotting pitches or attempting to. I don't know the right way to ha to have pitching balanced do we just keep the way hitting is right now and entirely divert back to what pitching was last year 
Do we want super dots back? Super dots are pretty much gone. Um, I don't know. I really don't know what the answer is. I just know what's currently occurring is bad. It's not good. Um, SDS, for some reason, has a history of making patch game updates that fix one thing, but for some reason makes something else worse. And I say this all the time, I don't know how to code, I just know it's very difficult. So, I'm not going to offer a solution, because I don't have it. And respect to the people at SDS who try their hardest, and knew that last year's game sucked enough to own up to it, and make a game that has so much potential this year. But, this is the type of problem that they've already said they've addressed, and now it's back and worse. So, patience for a lot of people is going to start wearing thin if it hasn't already. It's the type of thing that needs to be gotten out in front of. There needs to be communication for it. Like, hey, we know there's an issue with warping pitches. Don't worry, we're looking into it. And then it needs to be corrected. Because, I mean, it's going to get, you know, we're going to start having summer circuit tournaments soon. Then the fall circuit. There's going to be high leverage money on the line tournaments being played. And the last thing you want in your game on that big of a stage is for your shit not to work and your pitches to warp. And that ultimately costs somebody thousands of dollars. That's an extreme situation that will not affect 99% of people. It won't affect me. It probably won't affect you. However, it is a real life situation that should encourage them to figure it out. Because that would be an absolute embarrassment if that happened on that big of a stage. With so many people watching, so many people caring about it. For some people, I mean, you might laugh, but like, some people can make a livelihood out of this game other than content. Like, there is competitive MLB The Show now, and those people make a living or at least help subsidize themselves with that. So, uh, I hope it gets fixed real soon. Please, SDS, I love you. Um, I, I very much enjoy this game, and I see so much potential in it, but... We have a big oopsie poopsie on our hands and someone's got to clean it up. Uh, that's going to do it though for this week, guys. I hope you also feel the same way I do about pitching. I think the issues are so obvious that most of us do feel them. Uh, please share your opinion. Seriously, down below in the comments. What do you think about pitching right now? How can it be fixed? Am I overreacting? I don't think I am. And then when you guys see this YouTube video on Thursday... I did not officially count how many warped pitches there were because I didn't want to bang my head against a wall. I'm guessing it's somewhere between 15 to 20, probably closer to 20. Count how many warped pitches you see. Put them in the comments. We'll play a game. And then you tell me if you think pitching works or not. Because I think Thursday's video, in which every pitch I threw, I threw excuse me, was recorded and put into the video, it's going to say a lot. So thank you guys for listening. I love you all so much. You guys have been killing YouTube lately. It means the world. I'll see you next time.